This is the Momentum Podcast. Today, we're joined by a very special entrepreneur, Brent Pullman, CEO of Midwest Soil Labs. Brent runs a massive company with over 200 employees and an incredible amount of revenue. Throughout the crisis that has gripped the world this past year, Brent has led his company to break their all-time revenue in company history without a single furloughed employee. Not only that, but his company gave back $2.8 million in PPP money in June And they also purchased a new 176,000 square foot building on 27 acres. Brent is an incredible entrepreneur and he runs an incredible organization because he's committed himself to learn how to be a leader. We have a concept that we share in our organization that in order to navigate the challenges facing your business, you must learn to lead your business from the passenger seat. In fact, we even say as a CEO, you're not growing a business, you're growing leaders to grow leaders in your business. This presentation Brent gave at a recent Sharfin Summit, and it's a powerful testament to learning how to lead effectively. I hope you enjoy. I'm Alex Sharfin, and this is the Momentum Podcast, made for empire builders, game changers, trailblazers, shot takers, record breakers, world makers, and creators of all kinds. Those among us who can't turn it off and don't know why anyone would want to. We challenge complacency, destroy apathy, and we are obsessed with creating momentum so we can roll over bureaucracy and make our greatest contribution. Sure, we pay attention to their rules, but only so that we can bend them, break them, then rewrite them around our own will. We don't accept our destiny. We define it. We don't understand defeat because you only lose if you stop and we don't know how. While the rest of the world strives for average and clings desperately to the status quo, we are the minority, the few, who are willing to hallucinate there could be a better future. And instead of just daydreaming of what could be, we endure the vulnerability and exposure it takes to make it real. We are are the evolutionary hunters, clearly the most important people in the world, because entrepreneurs are the only source of consistent, positive human evolution, and we always will be. Well, let me let me begin. Um, I tried to think of a title for this, and I'm always learning. I'm one of those guys who's always learning. Um, it's, it's really about that. And leading, I think, just in the last two years, I can't tr- tell you the transformation as far as leadership that this program uh, can offer you and what and I'm, I'm going to specifically talk about me, but I hope you grab something from this. And at the end, I don't know if there'll be time for questions, but I sure hope so. Um, so I'm going to go kind of fast. But again, um, save your questions because I, I, I do want to make sure that I do answer those. So with that, I'm going to start here. Okay, why did I join Sharfin? I have to tell you the the summit itself, um, when I first attended, I did not know if I was really an entrepreneur or not. And um, when I was in that room with 100 people and I felt the vibe, I could feel it walking into that room. I knew something was something about about it was like I was attracted to it. And what I learned through that process was deep down, I have always been an entrepreneur. I just got stuck in corporate world for the many, many years. But um, the fact that you have already said that you're different puts you in a different place. And I can't tell you the difference that just made just that first summit. And what I really wanted was a system as, and I I think I did the online billionaire code for six weeks. And I just really wanted to get into a system to make sure that I could uh, understand it and, and um, put it in place as fast as possible. So I was all about speed. That was just me. I was going to get it done. I was going to take the class and I was very transactional through this program in the beginning. I wanted to get it in, get it done in about another month. And I even called, I think, Alex and I said, hey, it's not going as fast as I thought. Can you just come in? Just come in to our company and talk for a couple of days. What he told me is you have to go through the process. So, and he was right. I couldn't get this done. This is not something you go through in two days or two months, um, even a year. It's it's life. It's it's going ongoing. And um, that's really what I, I joined so um, I didn't know where to start. And um, that last bullet, I'll talk a lot about that. I really thought self-care was uh, selfish. I wanted less of me and more of others. I really didn't like myself. And through that, I didn't realize how terrible I was treating people. 
and for my business, we were going, going, going. I, I thought the more projects I could put in people's, uh, in the company, the more we get things done. I was on a course for disaster. I was, I was overloading my people. And I just thought, I can't, come on, where's the deadline? Let's go. Let's, why, why is this not happening? And I was just probably one of the uh, worst leaders starting about three or four years ago. And I couldn't understand why I wasn't getting things done. And through that, I did, there was some attrition and I just knew there was a better way to do all this. And then it was the awakening. And when I say this awakening, I went to the summit a year ago in September. I'll never forget because we had to leave a little early on Friday and there were some bad storms and our flights were canceled. And I was with my operator, Dana Berkey. And I said, how are we going to get home? There's no, you know, are we going to wait till Monday or Tuesday? That's what they're telling us. And she's, she's an entrepreneur. She's had three businesses, sold them for profit. Uh, I have an outstanding operator. Um, and she said, nope, we're going to do this. She found a flight out of Dallas. And I said, well, how do you get from Austin to Dallas? And she said, we're going to, um, we're just going to do an Uber ride. So for two and a half hours, we did an Uber ride. It's the longest Uber ride I've ever been on. But through that drive, I really talked about the whole process. And she kept asking me more and more questions. And I really understood why I was in this program and why I needed to do it. From there, I completed the billionaire code. And I, I love the structure and the plan. I had all the pieces and somewhat it seemed like, but I, they weren't coming together. And through this program, it helped me put things together. And we started down that process of really going through that. And that took months. Last fall, for three months in a row, we just got through our client-centric mission. We just got through our values. You'll see our mission, our values. And that, and I was developing a leadership team. I did not know that it was going to take three or four months just to do that part. But I, that was so critical to the start of this whole process. So then 2020 comes around. And again, we've had a simple process. We're just starting to put things in. I'm starting to realize that I'm different. And through that, um, I had to get the right team on board. And I had that leadership team. But then we started again, we started those waterfall activities. And we're just starting to, get to go. And then that's when COVID happened. And then when COVID I think it really took me a step back and said, you know, you really need to look at self-care just a little bit. So that whole self-care happened, I would say in the last two years, but especially accelerated this past year. And with self-care, I began to work with a personal trainer. So twice a week, I go work with a personal trainer. I don't know guys, but I'm in my fifties. I had no idea that I even had hips when I first started with the personal trainer and my balance was way off. And I wasn't managing my stress. My trainer could see the stress in my shoulders. And then he, on some days he would say, wow, you, things are working out. And it was, be, or you don't have as much stress as you, as you do now. I found a routine. Every morning I get up at 4.30 in the morning and I either go for a run or a walk. I used to go to the gym, but because of COVID, I just, I like to get outside. And it's been so refreshing to be outside. The other thing, probably the most important, I can't tell you this, I'm sure you've heard it over and over, that momentum planner. The things that stuck out, stuck out for me was you always have to write your purpose every day. It gives you direction. And then you have to be grateful. You have to be, it forces you to be grateful. I was not being grateful for things that I had. The other one I'll add to it, it also, you have to list what you're uncomfortable with. And it's amazing to me to go back and see how many of those items I listed that were uncomfortable that have turned into wins. So anytime that I get even a little bit of uncomfortable comfortability, I go and write it down in that book. And the reason I do that, if I don't write it down, I'm going to be reactive and I'm going to say something I I'm going to regret a few days later. But by writing it down, it makes me slow down and I have to stop. And ultimately what that's done is it's helped me to treat myself better so that I can treat others better. Then the, then the summer, uh, well, last, last year I started with an executive assistant. That person didn't, we just really didn't get on the same page. I also had the, the issue where I thought, well, I'll just share this person with this another person too, to get the most out of that person. That's not right. You're a CEO. You should have your own executive assistant. You need your own person. It should not be shared with any other person. That person has made me so much better. Uh, Tracy has just been uh, phenomenal. She came on and she has taken so much off my plate 
It's phenomenal. And that's part of self-care. Growing up, my dad, my father never had an executive assistant. He started this company that I'm at now 45 years ago. He has never had an executive assistant. He thought it was, again, a waste. But think about that. If you don't have people to take this stuff off of you, he's left with the stress. And I've seen what it's done to his body. And I don't want to be that person. So by having an executive assistant, it has made all the difference for me from a self-care standpoint and, a, and obviously a production standpoint. The next phase, this was the hardest one for me, was getting out of the day-to-day. Um, I always wanted, I just felt very important. I had to know what was happening. I knew things being there. I've been there for 15 years. I knew some things that I could help people. And I realized that I was the roadblock. And getting out of the day-to-day, I've done it since the summer. And, and that really takes a lot. And we had to do a whole reorganization to do it. And when you're talking at a company with 208 employees, that makes it very tough. And again, you can't do these things in a week with that many pieces and people. But it was it was the best thing that happened. Being out of the day to day has given me new life, new spark. People could definitely see it. The direction of the company, and I'll get to some of those things. Everything changed the day I did that. As I talked about these things, the hardest thing to do. Um, and then the daily huddles. During COVID, we, we met because of COVID. That was my first reason to meet as a daily huddle. We had a COVID 15 minute, we should have called it 19 minute anyway, but every morning at 9.15, we would meet and talk about the COVID issue. But out of that, just that daily huddle, we now have a 170 page COVID handbook. We got so proactive uh, and did a number of things that helped us as a company. And it was all because we decided to commit to that daily huddle each day. And getting out of the day-to-day really helps with building an infrastructure. And what do I mean by that? You've got an infrastructure. I have an infrastructure now in place that can operate the company so that I can continue to do the strategic things. The strategic things at this level are just, uh, they're so critical and so important. It's amazing how much I probably missed out because I was in the day to day. I can't t- I can't stress that enough. When you get to that level where you need to get out, you need to get out. And and it it'll take it'll again, it'll be so much the growth in your company, I can from all phases will be phenomenal. It has for me. Then uh, our operator, that last, final bullet, I needed some way. So getting out of the day to day, I've even gone so far as I'm not in the daily huddle. Some people are but I meet with my operator every single night. She gives me a summary of what happened during the day or if she needs something, but every single night we get a, we, we do a, um, a talk four thirty to five. It just seemed to work for both of us. Again, you have to find what works for you, but we needed the space. She needed space to, and more authority on her side. I needed the space and authority on our side, but we both need each other in the end. We both have to know what you, what's happening on both sides. She's the trusted person that, again, that I always go to. But I found a way to make it work. You, again, you have to find it a way that you can make that, that piece work for you. Let me talk a little bit about the outcomes, too. I think this first one is probably the most critical. Right now, my focus is on people. I want to know what's happening. I, had, I have one employee, even this year, her husband committed suicide. I had, and uh, we're trying to get her back into work. I'm much more in tune with what's happening with other people. And I'm much more in tune with if something's not feels, doesn't feel right. I ask more questions. I wasn't that person two, three years ago. My whole focus is on people because that only way we're going to ever grow exponentially is through our people. People first, we'll get the processes, but those people are so it's such a critical asset to me. And I treat, again, we have to treat everybody with the utmost respect and understand where they coming from. With COVID and people at home and t- teaching their kids, um, I even went so far during COVID is I sent an email, I tried to reach as many people as I could personally. And I my question to them was, are your kids, are you your kid's favorite teacher? Because if it's they're not, if you're not, I want you them, I want your kids to know that you should be their favorite teacher right now during this time. Because we know a lot of schools have shut down. But when you as a leader, can actually try to empathize with your team. It's amazing how how much they will do for you, how much they want to be a part of something like that. So I really look at it as we're trying to become, even though we're bigger, private, we're still families. 
Um, and then trust. Oh man, that's a big one. I mean, you're going to have issues, but again, that momentum planner, if you can write it down, I'll tell you what, you can, you can build that trust, you build your trust in yourself. And then you let the little things go and actually you write them down so that you see that they can turn into wins later on. We celebrate wins, any type of win, heck, I'm going to celebrate it. Cause it's, it's big. Um, we're more agile. We can do so much more right now because people know that they have a voice. People feel safe. When this, we, people know that they feel safe. I went so far as to hire 24 seven safety. Now I'm not a safety guard or a security guard. I'm not saying you have to do that, but I wanted people to feel safe where they were at. So if you, people feel safe, they will also, again, feel like um, that you care for them. We're building that strong infrastructure our culture has really turned 360 degrees. People are coming together. Uh, we made the front page of the newspaper because of this building last week. I took that picture and I went into our receiving area and told them they were all stars. I, I've never seen young people take their phones out and take pictures of a newspaper and say, okay, that's my new profile or that I'm gonna, I gotta share that on my social media sites. That's what we want though. We want that wins, that excitement and you just never know how people are going to react to that. The next one is probably really a key. I do not overreact. I really, and yesterday they were giving me a hard time because I have all these figures and I'm really trying to be humble during COVID and I'm trying, trying to listen. They said, you said that and you were just so calm with all your numbers. I'm calm both ways because I, I really do believe that's important too. When people, when you, when you start to win, it's just a ment, it's, it's a whole mentality, and um, I can just really see that. Of course, I'm a, Ch a huge Chiefs fan, and I, I follow them so closely. I watch them on the sidelines. I probably watch more of the not the game, but the the other part because I really want to see how that team comes together. And it's just taught me again: if you've got the right people, you've got the people, and you've got the process and the, and the execution, and you're really just kind of watching that and caring for each other at the same time, all that together as that one graphic really displayed that those things matter most. And I really do think that's what matters most is really honing in on people. So let's talk about some measurable results too because of this. So I will try to get a little more excited than I did yesterday, but um, we are actually in this year of COVID, I had no idea what would happen. I didn't put it in here, but we actually got PPP money of 2.8 million and had to give it back. I didn't feel right taking it because we were doing so well. Our biggest sold volume ever, that's we're gonna break uh, 1.8 million number of soils. We haven't gotten that far in five years. Five years ago was the last time we hit that record. I talked about the COVID handbook. There's no way if I wouldn't have spent that time Last fall with that leadership team, that wouldn't have happened or those, da those daily huddles. Work from home, we implemented it for, out of our 208, obviously they're in the lab, so they have to come in, but 70 people had the, had the tools and the laptops and the connections that they needed to, and we got that done in 48 hours. We just purchased a property. I showed the, the grow and scale people here. It's phenomenal, 176,000 square foot building. If I was not in this program, I would have never seen that. I would have never even thought to even look for something like that. We got it at such a discounted rate because of COVID. The company here March 16th just took off and made everybody work from home. But again, if you're not in the strategic, you're not going to see those things. I talk about personal, um, personal care. I'm really working again on the whole weight thing. I've lost again, 15 pounds just in the last six weeks. And I really, I'm focused on that too. So I, again, I think all these things come together. The closer relationship with workers, friends, and family, uh, the overall revenue increase at our level, if you can hit 10% 10, 10 more than you did the year ago, that's phenomenal. I haven't seen that in almost like 10 years now. So th these things, um, and then more projects. That last one, I said we had over 100 projects. I've lost track of how many projects that we have talk, talked about in the waterfall. We celebrate every little sub project too. I've probably created, completed more projects this year than any other year. And it's all because we took the time to get a, our, our people, our process, our systems in place so that we could do more. And again, the, probably the key is treating people the, the best way that we can. What a powerful presentation from an incredible entrepreneur. 
If you're ready to understand what it takes to be the leader of a massive organization like Brent and how you can start working to get there today, we want to help you. If you go to BillionaireCode.com right now, you'll be able to connect with a member of our coaching team and find out which one of our memberships best fits the needs of your business right now. Let us show you the systems and the processes and the frameworks that we teach entrepreneurs to learn how to lead from the passenger seat and grow world-changing empires. Go to BillionaireCode.com right now. We'll see you there.